And again, I reiterate, we see a need, we, as a, as a uh, team of teachers, we see a need to help students transfer thoughts to paper in a clear and concise manner. That's a very difficult transition, taking from here and putting it on paper. It, that's probably the hardest thing or the hardest <coughs> skill that children have to uh, learn or apply on a regular basis. They know what they want to say, and sometimes saying it is easier than having to figure out the wording and how am I going to say this clearly, but there are strategies that we use and that we will share with you today uh, to help them at home. So where are the difficulties? Well, in early writers, they have limited vocabulary. They haven't quite gotten the language down yet. They don't quite know the words that they want to use. Sometimes they can describe what they want, but they, don't, they can't pinpoint it yet. So with limited vocabulary, it makes it difficult. It's difficult for them to form coherent sentences or full thoughts. Sometimes they just speak in what they want, in phrases. So we have to develop how do we get the noun, the verb, the subject, the predicate in there. Sometimes children don't have enough practice with oral language. They have a lack of command of the language. They don't know the nuances or the expressions or the idioms that we have in our language yet. So as parents, we encourage you to practice speaking, talking to your children. One of the things here is don't accept uh, a yes and a no answer or a one word or a phrase answer. Get them to speak in complete sentences. And honestly, it's very, very impressive to hear them do that in a lesson when a teacher asks them a question and they put part of the question back into their, set, into their statement and go with it. It really does help language development. Some students have limited reading time at home. And we always feel that good readers understand and appreciate good writing, which they then try to imitate. If they read enough and listen to enough stories, it somehow becomes ingrained in them as to how they want to begin their story, or what kind of language they want to use, or how they want to describe a setting or develop a plot. It does make for very, very interesting writing if they read often enough and if they understand what they're reading. It also makes for better spellers because they are in tune to seeing the language and to seeing words spelled correctly. And the more you see, you know your eye is a camera that just snaps a picture every time you see something and stores it, the more you see it, the more you're apt to basically spell correctly again. And as I mentioned before, writing is more than a skill, it is an art. And we are not all gifted with this art, but skills can be honed. We can teach the skills and they can develop their skills. Some people just innately can write anything right off the top of their head. We're not looking for that at this point. We are making sure that they come away with the skills so that they can develop whether it's their love for writing or not, but that they can develop very good written communication skills. Thank you, Mrs. So then we have some action steps for parents. The first one, encourage vocabulary rich conversations at home. If something has a name, use it. They might be young, but that's okay. They'll pick it up and you'll see that they'll put it right into their vocabulary. I have a granddaughter who, when she was three years old, she was taking swimming lessons. And for some reason, she was supposed to come to our house in the afternoon, and they got there sooner than expected. And I said, Ma, you're here early. What happened? Oh, she said at three years old, someone had an accident in the pool, and they had to come and put chemicals in there. And I'm thinking, did you just say chemicals? at three, you know? So it is very, very possible when you use the right you know, vocabulary, they pick it up and they will use it. So we encourage that. Have your children respond to questions using full sentences, as I just mentioned. Engage in conversations, not just responses to questions. So, honey, what did you do today at school? Ah, uh, nothing, you know, the usual excuse, you know, the usual reason they give you, or I had fun today in math. Really? Tell me what you did. What happened? You know, what made it so exciting? Get them to talk, get them to use expression, get them to use um, voices, but have a conversation. Sometimes a Q&A period with your child wears them down. But if you can talk about something that maybe you watched a movie together or you went to the park or you went and visited a museum, get them talking about what they saw, what they thought about it, what they'd like to do next. It really gets them motivated to speaking, gets them to use their language a lot more.
read with your children and have them comment on what was read. Talk about the characters. Why did they like or did they not like the character in the story? What was their favorite part and why? What do they think will happen next? It gets them thinking. It gets them, to, we teach character traits in our literature classes and then we have the children write about the characters. This is a great way to start that conversation going and that, that imagination going as to why they liked a character in a book. Um, what was their favorite part? Oh, a lot of them will tell you, oh, I liked when the dog jumped in the tub and, and splashed water all around. Okay, but why did you like that? Hmm. Now they're not so sure as to why they liked it, or they'll say, well, it made me laugh, or I remember when our little Fluffy did the same thing, and they can make a self-to-text connection there. It's wonderful conversations that you can be getting from your children. And what do they think will happen next? Well, that's an advanced form of thinking. Now we begin into inferencing. You know, what can you, can you make a prediction? Well, in order to make a prediction, they need to know what it is that they've just read about, and it, it forces them to tie in do we know, can we comprehend what we just read to make a logical prediction? Some of these things are what we ask them to do in writing. What do you think will happen next? And they need to almost think about in, in advance, where did I start, where is it going, how am I going to get there? When I start my paragraph, I need to end my paragraph with something logical to tie in. So have them think about these types of questions. These are workshop questions for you to, to be thinking about, and as the teachers come to your tables later on, if you, if you need to have the answers to these questions, and you can discuss them at your table, how well do your children implement the writing process? And that question you can be talking about when the teachers work with you on the writing process. What strategies are they using? What strategies do you notice in your children's writing? Are they using any of the strategies that you will be learning about today? And if you haven't taken notice yet, you can start taking notice when you go home from here on out just to see, wow, are they using that strategy? Did they put that in? Did they take the seed idea and did they make it larger? Or did they talk about everything in general? What is it that they're doing? And then how well did they assess their written final piece? You will come away with some rubrics for you to look at to assess your own children's writing. But if they are the same rubrics that your children work with here, so you can almost sit with your child at home, take a look at a piece of written, uh, written writing, and basically look and say, did we do this? Let's follow along. Let's follow along. And it gives you an idea as to how we view your children's writing. Okay? Now, somebody wants to silence that? Okay. I have two reflection questions that I'm going to pose to you now. But at the end of the workshop, I would like to hear from you as to uh, how you're going to respond to these reflections. The first one is, what is important to look for in your child's writing? We're going to answer that at the end. And then what strategies did you take away from this workshop? So as you're working and thinking, please be thinking about these essential questions that we'd like you to think about. And then as we finish our workshop, I'd like you to respond to these questions to help us out, to help